It was a chilly October evening when Lucy, Mike, and Emma decided to visit Ikea. They were college friends, looking for furniture to furnish their new apartment. The massive store, known for its endless maze of showrooms, seemed like the perfect place to spend a few hours. Little did they know, this ordinary trip would turn into a night of terror. As they entered the store, the bright lights and cheerful music welcomed them. The trio grabbed a map and started their journey through the winding aisles, joking and laughing as they picked out items for their new home. They admired the stylish living rooms, tested the comfy beds, and even tried out the quirky kitchen gadgets. After a couple of hours, they decided to split up to cover more ground. Lucy headed towards the bedroom section, Mike towards the living rooms, and Emma towards the kitchen area. They agreed to meet at the cafeteria for some Swedish meatballs in an hour. Lucy wandered through the maze of bedrooms, admiring the different setups. She was particularly taken by a cozy-looking room at the far end of the showroom. As she stepped into the room, she noticed something strange. The air felt colder, and the lights seemed dimmer. A chill ran down her spine. She brushed it off, thinking it was just her imagination. Meanwhile, Mike was having trouble finding the living room section. The store's layout seemed more confusing than usual, and he couldn't shake the feeling of being watched. He glanced around, but there were no other customers in sight. The cheerful music had faded, replaced by an eerie silence. He quickened his pace, hoping to find his way back to the main aisle. Emma was happily exploring the kitchen section when she heard a faint whisper. She turned around but saw no one. Shrugging it off, she continued browsing. Suddenly, she felt a tap on her shoulder. She spun around, but again no one was there. Panic began to set in. She decided to head back to the cafeteria, hoping to find Lucy and Mike. At the cafeteria, Lucy was already waiting. She looked relieved when she saw Emma. Have you seen Mike? She asked, her voice trembling. Emma shook her head. They waited for another 15 minutes, but there was still no sign of him. Worried, they decided to search for him together. As they retraced their steps through the store, the atmosphere grew more unsettling. The lights flickered, casting eerie shadows on the walls. They called out for Mike, but their voices echoed back at them, unanswered. The once familiar aisles now felt like an endless labyrinth. After what felt like hours, they stumbled upon a door labeled Staff Only. Desperate and with no other options, they decided to enter. The door creaked open, revealing a narrow, dimly lit corridor. The walls were lined with old, dusty furniture and forgotten decorations. The air was thick with an acrid smell, making it hard to breathe. They ventured deeper into the corridor, their footsteps echoing ominously. Suddenly, they heard a faint sobbing sound. Following the noise, they found Mike huddled in a corner, his face pale and eyes wide with terror. We need to get out of here, he whispered, his voice trembling. There's something in this store. As they helped Mike to his feet, they heard the sound of footsteps approaching. The trio froze, their hearts pounding. The footsteps grew louder, accompanied by a low, guttural growl. They turned and ran, not daring to look back. They navigated the twisting corridors, their fear driving them forward. The growling grew louder, closer. They burst through another door and found themselves in the warehouse, filled with towering shelves and narrow aisles. The exit was in sight, but the growling was right behind them. Just as they reached the exit, a dark figure lunged at them from the shadows. It was a grotesque, twisted creature with glowing red eyes and sharp claws. They slammed the door shut, barricading it with a nearby pallet. The creature pounded on the door, but the barricade held. Breathing heavily, they stumbled out of the store and into the cold night air. The parking lot was deserted, and their car was the only one left. They jumped in, sped away, and never looked back. The next day, they reported their experience to the store's management, but no one believed them. The security footage showed nothing unusual, and there were no signs of any disturbances. The trio never returned to that Ikea, and they warned everyone they knew to stay away. Years later, they still couldn't explain what happened that night. The memory of the creature and the labyrinthine corridors haunted their dreams, they realized that some places are not as ordinary as they seem, and sometimes, the scariest monsters are the ones that hide in plain sight.
Mark had just started his new job at IKEA, working the graveyard shift. It wasn't his first choice, but the pay was decent, and he needed the money to pay off his student loans. His tasks were simple, restocking shelves, cleaning, and making sure everything was in order for the morning. The store was vast and quiet at night, with only the hum of the air conditioning and the occasional creak of settling furniture breaking the silence. One night, as Mark was arranging a display in the living room section, he noticed a small door tucked away in the corner. It was labeled, Authorized Personnel Only. Curious, he approached the door, wondering why he had never noticed it before. He tried the handle, and to his surprise, it opened easily. The door led to a narrow, dimly lit staircase that spiraled downward. Mark hesitated for a moment, then decided to explore. As he descended, the air grew colder, and a musty smell filled his nostrils. At the bottom of the stairs, he found himself in a long, dark hallway lined with old, forgotten furniture and dusty boxes. Mark's footsteps echoed as he walked, and he couldn't shake the feeling that he was being watched. He told himself it was just his imagination, fueled by the eerie atmosphere. He turned a corner and saw a faint light coming from a room at the end of the hall. The door was slightly ajar, and he could hear a low, murmuring sound. Pushing the door open, he stepped into a large room filled with old, mismatched furniture. In the center of the room was a large, antique mirror, its surface covered in a thick layer of dust. The murmuring grew louder, and Mark realized it was coming from the mirror. He wiped the dust away, revealing a perfectly clear reflection of himself. Suddenly, the reflection began to change. Mark watched in horror as his own face twisted into a grotesque, sinister grin. His reflection's eyes glowed a sickly green, and it began to speak in a voice that was not his own. Welcome, Mark, the reflection hissed. We've been waiting for you. Mark stumbled back, his heart pounding in his chest. He turned to run, but the door slammed shut with a deafening bang. The room grew darker, and the temperature dropped even further. The murmuring voices grew louder, surrounding him. He frantically searched for another way out, but the walls seemed to close in around him. The furniture began to move, sliding across the floor to block his path. Panic set in as he realized he was trapped. Join us, the voices chanted. Join us, Mark. Mark squeezed his eyes shut, trying to block out the voices. He felt a cold hand on his shoulder and screamed. When he opened his eyes, he was no longer in the room. He was back in the living room section of the store, standing in front of the display he had been arranging. His heart was still racing and his hands were shaking. He looked around, expecting to see something out of place, but everything seemed normal. The small door in the corner was gone, replaced by a solid wall. Mark checked his watch. Only a few minutes had passed since he first opened the door. Confused and terrified, he decided to finish his shift and leave as quickly as possible. He kept glancing over his shoulder, half expecting to see the grotesque reflection or hear the murmuring voices again. But the rest of the night was uneventful. The next day, Mark told his supervisor about the strange door and the terrifying experience. His supervisor gave him a puzzled look. There is no such door in the living room section, he said. You must have been imagining things. Mark insisted, but his supervisor just shook his head. Determined to prove he wasn't crazy, Mark returned to the store that night. He searched every corner of the living room section, but there was no door, no staircase, no dark hallway. As the weeks went by, Mark tried to put the incident behind him, but he couldn't shake the feeling that he was being watched. He started having nightmares about the grotesque reflection in the cold, dark room. The voices haunted his dreams, whispering his name and beckoning him to join them. One night, while restocking shelves in the kitchen section, Mark heard the faint sound of murmuring again. His heart skipped a beat and he followed the sound, hoping to find an explanation. It led him to a large, antique mirror on display. The surface was clean, reflecting his image perfectly. As he stared at his reflection, his face began to twist into the same sinister grin he had seen before. The eyes glowed green and the voice returned. Welcome back, Mark, it hissed. We've been waiting for you. The mirror's surface rippled, and Mark felt a cold, invisible force pulling him closer. He tried to resist, 
but his feet moved involuntarily towards the mirror. The reflection's grin widened, and the voices grew louder, chanting his name. In a final, desperate effort, Mark tore himself away from the mirror and ran. He didn't stop until he was outside the store, gasping for breath. He quit his job the next day, vowing never to return to that haunted Ikea. Years later, Mark still couldn't explain what happened. He avoided mirrors as much as possible, afraid of what he might see. The nightmares never truly went away, and he always felt like he was being watched. And sometimes, late at night, he could still hear the murmuring voices, calling his name, waiting for him to join them in the darkness. In a small town nestled between rolling hills and dense forests, there stood an Ikea store unlike any other. It was said to be the largest in the region, sprawling over several floors with a maze-like layout that could confuse even the most seasoned shopper. Among the locals, rumors circulated about strange occurrences within the store, but none dared to explore the dark truths lurking behind its cheerful facade. One rainy evening, Claire, an adventurous college student known for her love of urban legends, decided to visit the Ikea store after hearing whispers about a hidden section rumored to appear only to those who dared to wander after closing time. Armed with a flashlight and her curiosity, Claire slipped into the store just before it closed, eager to uncover the mysteries within. As she ventured deeper into the store, the familiar showroom displays gave way to darker, less maintained sections. The air grew colder, and the once bright lights flickered ominously above her head. Claire navigated through aisles of disheveled furniture, feeling as though the store itself was rearranging to trap her within its labyrinthine corridors. After what felt like hours of wandering, Claire stumbled upon a door marked with a faded sign that read, Staff Only. Ignoring the warning, she pushed it open and entered cautiously. The room beyond was filled with shelves of old, abandoned furniture covered in dust and cobwebs. It was a stark contrast to the polished displays upstairs, exuding an unsettling atmosphere that sent shivers down Claire's spine. As she explored further, Claire discovered a small staircase hidden behind a row of bookcases. Curiosity overcoming her fear, she descended into the darkness below. The air grew thick with an inexplicable chill, and Claire's flashlight revealed narrow corridors lined with shelves stacked high with broken and discarded items. Each step echoed ominously, as if the store itself was alive and watching her every move. Suddenly, Claire heard a faint whisper echoing through the corridors. She froze, her heart racing as she strained to listen. The voice was distant yet unmistakable, calling her name in a haunting melody that sent chills down her spine. Ignoring the warning bells in her mind, Claire followed the sound deeper into the labyrinth. Eventually, she arrived at a large, circular room bathed in an eerie blue light. In the center stood a towering display of mirrors, their surfaces reflecting distorted images of Claire as she approached cautiously. The room seemed to pulse with an otherworldly energy, and Claire felt a sense of unease wash over her as she stared into the warped reflections. One mirror in particular caught her attention, a tall, ornate mirror framed with intricate carvings depicting scenes of unknown origin. Its surface shimmered with an ethereal glow, drawing Claire closer against her better judgment. As she reached out to touch it, a sudden gust of wind swept through the room, extinguishing her flashlight and plunging her into darkness. In the pitch-black silence, Claire's senses heightened, and she could hear faint whispers echoing all around her. The voices grew louder, swirling around her like a sinister chorus. They spoke of ancient secrets and forbidden knowledge, promising her unimaginable power if only she would join them in their eternal embrace. Terrified, Claire stumbled backwards, desperate to escape the haunting voices that threatened to consume her sanity. She fumbled in the darkness, searching for the staircase that would lead her back to safety. With each passing moment, the whispers grew more insistent, their words weaving into her mind like a sinister melody. Just as Claire feared she would be lost forever in the depths of the Ikea labyrinth, she spotted a faint glimmer of light in the distance. Summoning every ounce of courage, she sprinted towards it, heedless of the obstacles that stood in her path. The voices grew louder, their taunts and promises echoing in her ears as she fought to break free from their malevolent grasp. Finally, 
Claire burst through the door at the top of the staircase and into the familiar sight of the showroom floor. Gasping for breath, she collapsed against a display of sofas, her heart pounding in her chest. She glanced around frantically, half expecting to see the mirrors and hear the whispers once more. To her relief, the room was empty, save for the rows of neatly arranged furniture and the flickering overhead lights. The eerie blue glow and haunting whispers had vanished without a trace, leaving Claire to wonder if it had all been a figment of her imagination, a twisted dream born from the depths of the Ikea store. As she made her way towards the exit, Claire couldn't shake the feeling that she had narrowly escaped something far more sinister than mere hallucinations. The echoes of the whispers lingered in her mind, a haunting reminder of the darkness that lurked beneath the surface of the familiar and mundane. From that day forward, Claire never spoke of her harrowing experience in the Ikea labyrinth. She returned to her normal life, but the memories of that night haunted her dreams, a constant reminder of the thin veil that separates reality from the unknown horrors that lie hidden in the shadows. And whenever she passed by an Ikea store, she couldn't help but wonder what secrets lay buried within its labyrinthine corridors, waiting to ensnare unsuspecting souls in their sinister embrace.